In reference to what I said earlier, how do I know as a young parent that I have a balanced investment of my time and money between my children and my other relationships? It's a great question. How do you know if you have a balanced investment? That's the reason why that you do what you do by faith. Let's say that you have to be able to buy the kids, you have to buy the children's shoes. Children don't understand the sacrifices that you have to make. So if they need shoes, they need shoes. If it's a spouse, Linda and I chose that what we were going to do, that in order for us to be able to get ahead, which is, and, and this is one of the things I want you to know, what, a, what a, lot of, a lot of individuals don't really realize is that I've done this job for over 27 years. So someone coming into this now at this particular point going, oh my God, look at his watch. You don't even know how many tens and twenties of watches I've given away when I didn't even have one. You don't know, I'm, people love just coming to my house. It's like, for them, it's like going to the mall. They don't have to go out. It's like I'm all right there. Why? Because they get four or five new pairs of shoes, new jackets, new pants. I don't even get them. They, I, I, I don't even get to put them on. I said, well, I don't know how these are going to fit because I never tried them on. And they get them. And they're, and they're free and they go, my goodness, how do I, I'll come, can I come to your mall? You know, sure you can. Why? Because when you choose to live your life as a giver, you don't even care what comes. Because it's going to be given away. I'm just going to give it away anyway. What's the difference? Why? Because I'm not at a point in my life. Brother John said something to me today. He said, you in your life are in your greatest income producing years. He said, for me, I have, I'm finished in my income producing years. So the way that you have to look at money and the way I have to look at money are two different ways. We look differently at money. You have to look at it as a sower. I have to look at it as a maintainer. You have to maintain wealth. In your investments, you go from investing money to make money to a place where you're not investing to make money, you're investing to keep money. And that happens in the different age groups of your life. You understand that? I mean, that's how, that's how it happens. And so, here, how do I know that I have a balanced investment? What you do is that you, you actually begin to take you and your children and you begin to sow your lives anywhere you can. And the reason why that you do that is so that you can see what's going to bring something back into your life. Someone is going to recognize what you're doing. Someone will know what you're sowing. Someone will see you sowing in tears. And that's where you're going to find that Boaz that you've been looking for. But that Boaz does not come. Remember, Boaz just uh, it doesn't show up when what it is is that you make no investment of your life. You invest what you have. You take care of your children with the money that you have been given through the labor of your hands. You believe God for the money that you can sow because otherwise you're consistently eating your seed. You need more money than you have to get out of where you are. And that's how you take what you have and you put it into something. Where are you putting it? With who are you distributing it? So you take the money that you make and of course you tithe because that's what you do. But 
you take your other money and you make sure you take care of the needs unless there's been an agreement that this is what we're going to do. We're choosing for a certain amount of time, Linda and I did this, to live without. Linda and I could have paid cash for a home in 1976 and we didn't. We gave all the money away. If her parents would have known that, are you kidding me? My parents, I wouldn't have bothered my parents, but Linda's parents, no way. They would have strung me up. Now, they don't mind it so much because it works. So we took money for a home and gave the money away. So when somebody comes up and they want to talk about, oh man, look what you have, please. I gave away all that stuff. I've given away cars. <laughs> I can't even tell you what I've given away. But that, that would bother you. Because you have things. Things must never have you. The moment you know something has you, get rid of it. That's what happened to the rich young ruler. And it got him. It trapped him. And he never got out. You have to choose to never live there. You have things, but things must never have you.